questions from yesterday. And I know you had a couple questions. Oh, no, I don't, they're not all related either, so I'll try to keep it. Oh, um, in one of your sessions, you had mentioned uh, the play, you know, using the play right, in the little minute, and I agree. Yeah. All down, and I spoke with, I forget his name, and, and he told me pretty much the answer you gave it. The molecule was too big to damage. Yep. It's so big, it's not going to get into your gut. Should I not use it? I don't know. What if you got a leaky gut? No. Well, now that I know that, I'll stop. I was using it. Yeah. Kathleen said something the other day about um, avoiding all the toxins and avoiding them in food. Well, if I know I'm going out to a restaurant with the guys on a particular night, I mix up a batch of clay that morning so I can oh, get it home. <laughs> I just, I don't carry it in the store and I don't utilize it. Yeah, it's my personal preference. You know, Ruben sells it. That's where he sells it first. Well, he sells the Redmond line, the, the Redmond. Real salt, the stuff you buy is called real salt. Yeah, he carries the Redmond clay. Yeah, and the gentleman yeah, that's been right. boasting it for 20 years, you know, has fantastic stories about dealing with it. Yeah. But his fantastic stories are on cuts and burns and skin problems. No, every internally, I know, but his big stories of success are always external. Applications. We were at dinner, and he told us the big stories about some of his better things, and everyone was an external source in his QA. All of the Complaints come up, and they're internal. As well. Yeah, well, that's probably why I'm not invited back to Redmond. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Except well, there's too much aluminum. Not cool, it, but you, in other words, you have minerals that do the um, the cleansing process. Yeah. Um, yes, I, I believe that you have you to. You the, the your minerals. good minerals will whip out the bad minerals, yes. and you got to add for your compounds. Yeah. So, good morning. Uh, today is. Um, I'm going to talk about a book I'm going to release. This book, I started writing it in 1981. And it's taken me a long time to get it, get it going. Uh, actually, I never thought I'd get it out. Um, but it's time for me to release it. I think uh, the timing is right. And this is the right place to bring out what the human body needs in terms of minerals, both macro and micro. Uh, it, what vitamins fall under the category of minerals. We need vitamins to absorb minerals. And we also need the amino acid uh, question, which is the building blocks of protein. So minerals for, ac minerals for acupuncture meridians is, is an attempt, it's my best attempt, to describe the flow of weak magnetic energy in the body. I do utilize a periodic table produced by Walter Russell in about 1923. It ended up in a book called Atomic Suicide in 1955. And this book was written to try to explain the forces of nature and how radioactivity could have a negative impact on that. So I became aware of this book in 1978. <laughs> and I got to know chemistry different than anybody else because not many people utilize this chart. Good morning. What made this chart unique that nobody really looked at is because in 1923 he predicted the existence of all of the named subatomic particles. And as you know, there's a large hard-on collider over in Switzerland. subatomic particle names off a periodic chart by Walter Russell and it took me a few years uh, 1984 they came out with a book called quarks Q U A R K S quarks and it fell right into the same pattern and understanding as Walter Russell had predicted so it was just a matter of converting names for the Walter Russell chart to the standard model so when you see these names that I'm going to be putting up, I'll have the Walter Russell name and I'll have the, the current model name for the subatomic particles. It doesn't matter if it's a carbon molecule or a uranium molecule. They, are, they and every mineral on the periodic chart are comprised of quarks. And quarks in varying ratios make every mineral on the periodic table. So essentially, we're all the same building blocks, just 
our DNA code has allowed us to flow energy slightly different according to the God-given code that you were given. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's given a good code. You can go to 23andMe and have it analyzed. Uh, they've kind of had it watered down a little bit, but there are other programs that take this information, like 23andMe Plus is a computer database that you put the information in, and you find out your individual nutritional weaknesses. And thanks to coming to this convention, this young lady from New York has given me a piece of the puzzle that I'm going to go back and utilize immediately. And it's based on about the same concept that Dan is actually trying to get so you can go into the store and go point and shoot. And what I learned yesterday, it floored me. Because I do hair tests, and they're $100, and I get a readout of 38 of the 42 minerals found in the brain, and I've been doing this for years and years and years. <coughs> but now there's something I could put in my health food store. I take the hair, I put it into a machine, I close it, Somehow they analyze it, it goes to a place in Germany and they come back and they give me a big printout of all your antioxidants, all your vitamins, all your minerals, all your needs, and they prioritize it. So this is like a different gizmo. I don't think you're going to take that gizmo into the store and lay it on some food and have them tell you what it is, but the same concept as the gizmo is going to be applied in my office relatively soon. Because I, if, if, if this isn't another gimmick instead of a gizmo. I'll be very disappointed if it's just another gimmick, but we'll see. Well, you can check it with what you know already from the yeah. test. I can. I would hope to. More accurate if the sample is fresher? Like you could do it right then instead of sending it to the lab? I don't think you own the machine. They have a device that you, you buy for twelve or fourteen hundred dollars. They ship it to you. You become a registered person. And it's only costing $35. But your testing has to be shipped. Yeah, my, my testing, we ship it to you, you fill out the paperwork, you collect the hair, you send the and hair in, and then it's analyzed. So it's not as fresh as the way she hers is done. Hers is done right in the health food store, and within minutes you have a result back. I mean, that's like, holy math. Yeah. So my first test would be to find one of these machines and send my hair in on two different days. And see if I get the same read. And send the same sample to both. Because I did that with all the hair analysis companies in America and Australia. I went in and got a buzz cut, stuck it in the bag, and shook it up for five minutes so I knew it was pretty well equally distributed. And then I mailed it to all the places and I got all the results back. So how do I get the results you're interested in? I'm going to write an article that will be published somewhere. I got the data, but just finding the time to collate the data and make a coherent uh, article. So I'd like to start off um, all of my speeches with a real small prayer. Every plant that my Father who is in heaven has not planted will be uprooted. That's Matthew 15, 13 that actually says, hmm, maybe we shouldn't be doing genetically modified activities to our plants and then growing and eating them because it's probably inherently dangerous. This is Chuck Walters. Uh, he got to know all the biggies. Uh, Dan Scow, uh, going back, you you have uh, all the people that were doing soil analysis. They were his friends, and, and he's been writing for years and years and years uh, through the Acres magazine, um, <coughs> through, through the way beyond my control. I ended up meeting him and writing a book with him, the one I just showed you, and it was the genetic code. And this is the cottage where I actually sit in that front window on the left, uh, from about 4 in the morning to usually 3 in the afternoon. And I don't like to take people up there because they want to do things and I just want to sit and write. So when I take people up there, they go, this is really boring, Rich. And I said, well, go lay down and take a nap. <laughs> You're on vacation. Um, this was another gift. I, I decided that I wasn't going to golf anymore because it was a waste of money and I wasn't going to ever play with Tiger Woods. So I... Got an airplane, it's a float plane, and I get my Seaplane Palace Association magazine, and the very first day I open it up, and it says, Outpost for Sale in Northern Ontario, and I call this gentleman, and he says, where'd you read about this or hear about my land for sale? I said, the Seaplane Palace Association. He says, darn. I said, what? He says, I posted it four minutes ago. I said, I'm posted. And one thing led to another, and I bought that point, and there, it's a three-mile-long lake. It's a half to three-quarters of a mile wide, and I'm the only cottage on it. And I have my own little stock of fish that we you know, go up and nurse and 
but it's where I go, and, and there's one of the fish that we catch and eat, very good fatty omega-3s. I took a couple doctors up there. Um, we have a frying pan that takes four burners to cook the food <laughs> out. <laughs> and uh, one of my neighbors, who constantly raids my garden, uh, that's a, a big moose, and then that's a caribou. So this is how far north I am. Uh, we can't go there in the winter because I have floats on my airplane. And I don't like to put skis on it. And I don't like to try to start this old bird when it's 27 below zero. Uh, I've been in practice. Uh, this will be coming up year number 38. Uh, I started actually working on people when I was eight. I started setting bones when I was 15. And I found out what the word chiropractic was when I was 18. And the day I found out about chiropractic, three days later, I was sent to the chiropractic school to learn more about it. And I took my aspirations of being a pro hockey player, and I converted it to hockey refereeing. And then I went to the chiropractic school that had the most ice rinks around it, so I could pay my way through doctor school. And it worked out quite well. My new website that will have this book I'm going to talk about, uh, we're saying December 15th, and it virtually could be up there tomorrow. But December 15th would be the, the last of the launch dates. Uh, DrRichOlrich.com is very generic right now. Uh, we're going to continually to keep adding information. I'm going to uh, start a, a mineral blog because I read every day. I've been up since 3. I've read from 3 to 6. And if I read it, it's about a mineral I copy and save it. We're going to start linking all the stuff that I read so people can go and just read about minerals in the news. Hillman Hill Food Store is the largest health food store in northeastern Michigan. And it's a pleasure to have that offered to people. The first book, uh, the first speech, was Minerals for the Genetic Code. I followed it up with Minerals for Tumor Suppressing Genes, which I did not did not print. It was too big of a book. It was way too complicated. And it's actually become outdated with newer research. I wrote a book to help anybody that wants to understand basic nutrition as to what you would get at a good health food store, what it is, how much you would take, when to take it, uh, and I'm going to release minerals for acupuncture meridians right now. I did the genetics of the day yesterday in the next two books, and I think I might be done. The next one's on milk, and the next one will be on boron. So I got my chiropractic business, the health food store. In the health food store, I got a coffee shop. I got a company that tests the genetics of cows. <coughs> I've worked with uh, Paul Detloff and, and, and various uh, all the farms from Organic Valley. We've genetically tested thousands and thousands of cows to clean the morphine up from Organic Milk Company. I believe they have the most morphine-free milk in the United States. And morphine is in all dairy products, and it causes massive problems to some, and other people aren't nearly as affected. I'm opening up an organic beauty salon at the first of the year, and in the back of the beauty salon I'll also have beds for sale, and I can ship anywhere in the country. So this is kind of what the cover of Minerals for Acupuncture Meridian looks like. Everybody's seen the classical yin-yang symbol mm -hmm. for every mineral that I think and feel that the genetic code has, mm -hmm. including the subatomic particle, has its own yin-yang symbol. There's no symbol that's duplicated up there. And you'll notice at the very top one, you see the bottom right of those circles, it's all white. And then the next one down is violet red. And then red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, blue, and black. And then from right to left, you see the same pattern. So acupuncture is the flow of magnetic energy. These are the ley lines of the human body, just like there's ley lines on Earth and there's points that have higher geomagnetic frequency or higher earthquakes or, or just however you want to look at it. But the ley lines of the Earth, also we have ley lines. This is probably the most extensive ley line, the bladder. It starts at the bottom of your foot and it goes all the way to your eyes. And when this one's out of whack, you normally have a problem of low iodine, possibly high fluoride, and people wake up with sleepies in their eyes. You know, people have their sleepies in their eyes. They're in desperate need of some iodine. How do you spell ley line? Iodine? No, ley. Ley, L-A-Y, and then hyphen L-A-N-E. Yeah. There are 12 ley lines that have been generally recognized, depending on your author, between five and 8,000 years. They think that acupuncture may have started its origins about 8,000 years ago, but it's become more modernized about 5,000 years ago. To get energy in your body, you have a small intestine 
which deals with nitrogen. You have a large intestine that deals with phosphorus. And the sum total of energy is known as the Krebs cycle. Three burners is the cycle of the Krebs, and three burners is governed by what the iodine will do to your mitochondria. The spleen may sit under your left, but it has points all the way down from your armpit all the way down into your foot. The liver has its most notable points on the big toe as well. And people that have congested livers and kidneys that don't excrete, they get gout. Right at point number two, because that's where the energy field of the liver goes. The small intestine is designed to house 10,000 unique individual species of bacteria that convert your food into something that your blood cells, white blood cells, red blood cells, can grab out of the intestinal tract and move to the parts of the body that need it. This is called GALT, G-A-U-L-T, and it's gunk lymphatic, I, I don't know the exact, but the cinema is GALT, G-A-U-L-T. Your body makes three million new white blood cells a day to just scour this lymphatics to grab stuff and take it to the body. And then there's a portal vein that takes this information and then goes into the liver where it's processed and then released. The stomach physically sits there, but it goes down to your toes, and you'll see that it goes up to the head. Why is it in the head? So the act of chewing will stimulate hydrochloric acid secretions to start to make your stomach work better. So this is when people hear bad news, they clench their teeth. They may grind their teeth, and this is because it's affecting the stomach. The pericardial sac, that's the sac that sits around your heart, and it goes down into your middle finger. And the pericardial sac has a real drastic need for magnesium. And when people come in and the second joint on their middle finger hurts, and that's the only thing that bothers them, these people are chronically low in magnesium, and that's the first sign of a magnesium deficiency symptom. They come in and go, I don't know why, but this joint hurts, and it's stiff. And you can loosen it up, but it stays stiff. You put them on magnesium, and it goes away, because the energy field from the sac around your heart. People that are low on magnesium, they get heart palpitations, and it makes them very nervous. And they run to emergency rooms, and they go, there's nothing wrong with your heart. But the sac around the heart is not beating and synchronized with the heart. It beats much faster than the heart, and you just get this terrible feeling, and you get nervous and anxious, and you think you're going to die. And it's because you're basically low on magnesium. And then magnesium also has a profound effect on the uterus and the, in the uterus cycle. Uh, women that are profoundly or chronically low in magnesium have very heavy clotting menses. And, and there's also an underlying thyroid problem that goes with it, but they also have uh, very very profound problems with magnesium and, and, and monthly cycles and water retention and depression. The lung goes down to your thumb. Um, the large intestine starts out at the right lower quadrant, and travels up to your liver, makes an exit stage to this way, to the left, over to the spleen, down and in. And every segment of that intestinal tract has to be moving right, or when things back up this intestinal tract, stretches and stretches and stretches and gets really thin, and then that's what can allow for what's called leaky gut, because you're stretching it out too much. What was the element that was associated with the large intestine? Phosphorus. So the kidneys do sit in your back, but the meridian actually goes from underneath your collarbone all the way down through your groin and into your feet. And you'll see it ends up on the bottom of the feet. Well, the two minerals that the kidney needs to function is sodium and magnesium. So when people get low in magnesium, they get feet cramps. They go, why am I feet cramping so much? Well, you're probably cramping in other places, but that's what really bothers you because you stretch out and you wake up at 3 in the morning, and next thing you know, you're screaming and hollering because you're cramping and your feet are all bound up. And there's a lot of other symptoms that go with that, yes? Did you say how long it takes to correct imbalances in specifically magnesium? Okay, yes, but the question was, if somebody's really bad in magnesium, how long does it take to correct? Well, first of all, if you go and have a standard blood test, it's always going to be normal because 98% of the magnesium 
is in your cell, it's not in the blood. So you have to get what's known as an RBC magnesium test, and that's where they crush the blood cells and they see where the magnesium level lies. But symptomatically, it's from top to bottom. Feet, your feet hurt, swell, smell, cramp, calf cramps, really bad morning stiffness because your muscles on the front of your spine are locking up, heart palpitations, eyelids that twitch. When you fall asleep, you, you think you're jumping off of something and you're going to land, and, and you get headaches and startle easy. And the worst is if you have a dream and something in that dream startles you right away. That's almost seizure activity from magnesium depletion. So, but, but to get it. I'm going right to it. <laughs> six months. <coughs> but you, it, it only takes about six months of taking magnesium to get yourself really brought back up, and it takes B vitamins to absorb it. Uh, it takes the mineral boron to retain it. So it's not just as easy as taking magnesium. And there are eight kinds of magnesium. And see, if I do magnesium, I get diarrhea. Well, find another source. Your body just doesn't like that kind. Um, and they're, 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 they're easy to find. Uh, the big box store is magnesium oxide. That's about the least absorbable. And brain-specific magnesium is something called MAG-T or magnesium theorine. Uh, these are always something that should be included in your daily regime because it's the easiest mineral to lose. All you have to do is not drink water, and you'll lose your magnesium. You drink too much coffee, you lose magnesium. You drink alcohol, you lose magnesium. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, <laughs> for example, uh, magnesium oil and uh, Epsom salt, what kind of magnesium is, is that? Well, some of the magnesium oil is coming from what, what sea on the other side of the world? Um, Black Sea or some sea. The Dead Sea, maybe? The Dead Sea, yeah. yeah. And, and that's what's like reaping in magnesium with other stuff. Uh, and then there's imitations that you can put on, and yes, they do work. And, I've had people like have them take Epsom salt baths, and they say my bowels work fine as long as I do Epsom salt baths once a week. Uh, you absorb it; your your skin is a sponge. Uh, but I, I, that's one way of doing it. It, it. it sores the aches and pains and stuff. But I like to see people take at least 100 milligrams of magnesium with each meal when they really need magnesium. It's probably the single most important mineral that I replace on a daily basis with everybody because. The, a lot of people come in drinking these high fructose corn syrup dark colas that are full of phosphoric acid. And, and one 12 ounce can of this stuff takes 400 milligrams on your body. Uh, I see the older people, their blood pressure goes up a little bit, and the first thing that happens is they go on a diuretic. The diuretic runs all the magnesium out of your body. Then they double the diuretic. And they, they just go way downhill fast, and when they come in, they're just dying. I put them on magnesium and it's like, hallelujah, I got to live again. Because depression, this is the cheapest medicine there is for depression, is magnesium. I mean, that is the best way to get out of depression is to start with magnesium. So as a farmer, you've got to have your calcium magnesium just right. Why? Because when the sun hits the earth and creates chlorophyll, that magic little thing, the center of chlorophyll is magnesium. And if you take the magnesium out and you put iron in, you've got hemoglobin. I mean, it's the same structure, just a different mineral. So it's really critical to have going into magnesium. And in your spinal cord, there's magnesium. In your kidneys, there's magnesium. And magnesium is what allows the heart to relax between beats. Did you have a question? Yes. Can you repeat the part where you're saying you can wake up something about being startled in a dream or something? Yeah. If, if you are dreaming, yeah. you know, people, oh, I fell off a bridge. People think I did this or I did that. And they wake up and, oh, it was just a dream and then go back to sleep. Those type of dreams are magnesium in deficiency induced activities. You interpret it as a dream, but in reality, your brain is shorted out. The gallbladder is an organ that a lot of people have jerked out. Yes, sir? Is there any correlation between dehydration and heart palpitations and magnesium? Well, yeah, as soon as you get dehydrated, you lose your magnesium, then you get that. I mean, I had that. Yeah, water. you're probably chronically low on magnesium. I mean, if you just go and type in tachycardia or atrial fib, I mean, atrial fib is a big thing that older people get, and they thin the blood out with warfarin and all kinds of stuff, 
do a Google search on magnesium at 85 and you get 8.2 million hits. A lot of people have good experiences by taking in a lot of magnesium. And the people that are having a lot of AFib problems, when you do a hair test, it's like they're starving. There's no minerals in their hair. It's just all, every mineral right across the board is drastically low. And of course, the first thing they're going to do is make you stay alive. So they're going to figure it well, so the heart doesn't have to work so hard. And they might do shock therapy. I mean, that's the medical approach. Because <laughs> they don't, most medical doctors don't do minerals and vitamins in their practice because they're just not trained. And it's changing. You see a lot of people that have headaches, this type of pattern of headaches goes with people that have gallbladder problems. What does the gallbladder do? It makes water and oil mix for the bacteria so you can absorb oils. <coughs> Breast milk has 900 oils in it. Distinct different oils. Every membrane and every cell is a oil-based product. Phospholipids, lipids, fats. And the amount of fat we need is completely underestimated. Uh, they know what a good gut is, they know what a good immune system is, and then there's everything that can go wrong. The one thing that's absolutely mandatory for good gut health is fatty omega-3s. So if you are a consumer of chicken or beef, you of course want it to be nothing but grass fed because it's full of fatty omega-3s. You throw in the grains to fatten them up, that's fatty omega-6s. And fatty omega-6s Yes, we need them, but we need them like as soon as they're made, because as soon as they're made, they start going rancid, and rancid fatty omega-6s causes inflammation. You've got to have your oils. Got to have your oils. People have their gallbladder taken out, and I go, no, well, that's a permanent problem. I'm going to put it back in. They dissected it to tell you that there was nothing wrong. Or it had sludge. Or it was full of stones. But either way, and, and, and it's always the same thing. It was so infected I was going to die. I'm really glad they got it out of there. So these people mentally are glad it's gone. But now they're not digesting their food because they're not getting secretions in enough concentration. Because you got this liver that pushes all its products into a little bag, and that little bag pulls the water out and concentrates it. And it's designed to release its contents two to four hours after you eat food so you can absorb oils. Now it just trickles into the system. Some people are blessed, they can't tell the difference when their gallbladder's gone. All they know is they don't have that pain no more, because when it goes bad and it gets plugged up, you say, fix me or shoot me. That's what happens. Yes, sir? So when I do Epsom salt baths, yep. I always sleep better that night. Absolutely. And I always thought that it was because it relaxes my muscles, but it's really the magnesium. It's the magnesium. Now, the chemicals in your brain that put you to sleep are, you have to have magnesium to make this cascade of events go down. So it's not that it relaxes. Well, it does relax your muscles. It relaxes muscles. Calcium is a contractor. And the opposite of calcium is magnesium, so magnesium is a relaxer. So you have this constant contraction relaxation in your heart, in your body. If you become calcium dominant, you're going to always have things that are in a state of contraction. People come in and they go, well, you know, um, I don't know what's wrong with me. I got a low back pain, it's going down my right leg, and this is primarily women. And I'll do two or three treatments, and I'm shaking my head going, you know, I'm moving these bones, and I know how to do this really good, and you're not getting any better. By the way, did you start taking calcium pills? Of course I don't drink milk. That's the answer. It's not, yeah, I'm taking calcium pills. The answer is, of course, I don't drink milk. And they watch TV, and they think that they need calcium. And I go, okay. Take these magnesium pills, stock your calcium pills, and come back in three days if you have any pain at all. I just get the calcium magnesium balanced back out because your kidneys may sit back here and they might make your feet cramp, but on the front of the spine there's a big group of muscles that keep us upright. They're called quadratus lumborum, and they attach to the area of the kidneys, and dehydration causes those big muscles to knot up, tilt your pelvis, and gives you. 40% of sciaticus or fault sciaticus because it's nothing more than the pelvis tilted from chronic muscle spasms. So if you sit in a chair here too long and you go to get up, it's like, oh, hang on a second. <sighs> oh, there. Lots of muscles all tight. You lay in bed. This is why people that have weak kidneys from low magnesium lay in bed all night long. They wake up. They want to keep sleeping. They can't sleep. They didn't get a good night's sleep, but they got to get out of bed because they feel better getting up and moving around. Mm -hmm. That's magnesium. Oh yeah, when you go through the symptoms, 
everybody starts, yep, that's me. Yep, 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 yep. So when people clinically come in, it's like, okay, where are all your magnesium going? Do you drink water? Oh, I never drink water. What do you drink? <laughs> that's my next question. What do you drink? Dark colas. Dark colas, uh, light colas, can you see through the bottle? Is it got phosphoric acid in it? Is it bromated? Is it got sucralose in it? Has it got aspartame in it? I mean, you just, you have to seek out the poison. And if you don't find the poison, explain it to them, and give them the option to quit it, then you have a patient that helps put your children to school. Because they keep coming in. You're not fixing the problem. Yes, Matt, sir. Yeah. Uh, I've heard about the gallbladder uh, flushes. Flushes, oh yeah. And, uh, Me too. I was wondering you have to be careful as a clinician to tell people how to take salt water and drink two parts of it with Epsom salts and then drink a cup of olive oil followed by some pea soup and go lay on your right hand side. <laughs> that works pretty good, but if that gallstone is too big and gets stuck, then they turn yellow and they go to the emergency room and they have the gallbladder out. I did it and passed 88 stones. They were small, they looked like Percy Kitchens and they were pliable. But you get one that's too big and it blocks that, that duck off. And if it's at a point where it blocks off the pancreas, your pancreas swells up, your gallbladder swells up, and you say, look, there is something drastically wrong, and within hours you're in an emergency room having the gallbladder removed. Now, what is that gallbladder? 90% of the time it's cholesterol. There are calcium stones you can get in that, but most of it's cholesterol. Your body's not, and it's too thick. The gall stuff is just too thick. Well, they took my gallbladder out and said it was full of sludge. Well, hmm, too bad you didn't know that yesterday. I could have told you what to do. Beets, beetroot, the red stuff. So what time of day does the gallbladder regenerate? The gallbladder regenerates from 11 to 1 at night. So people go to bed and they wake up with terrible heartburn. Well, for every reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So when would you want to do your beet juice? At high noon. That's where you put the stuff that you're going to wick all this stuff out. And I have people that have chronic gallbladder problems and chronically drink beet juice. The gentleman that has his farm inherited from his mother, his mother died at 80, or 96. I met her in 1981. She had the biggest gallbladder full of stones, and I taught her about beet juice. And, and they, they're the local chicken butchers. And you go there, and what you're not eating is the feet. They're eating the feet. They eat all this stuff. And I said, I taught her about beet juice. And until the day she died, she had her gallbladder. She said, oh, yeah, I just drink my beet juice. It goes away. Beet juice is a fantastic medicine. The most, it's the most powerful medicine in a person's house is beet juice. Yes. How much beet juice are you talking about? Um, when people are in a bad state, um, usually a, like a, a cup of beet juice. And, I mean, people say, what kind? Is it pickled beets? Is it canned beets? I go, look, if you're on the road, go buy some Delmonte beets. Open the can up and just drink the juice. Throw the rest of it away. <coughs> Because it's the juice you're looking for that works the best because it's, it gets the greatest surface area. And I tell people, look, you're not probably going to bleed to death because you're going to start urinating red. And I says, and then your stools are going to be red, and it's not because you have terrible hemorrhoids. I says, but and I said, quite honestly, you never want to see another beat again because you have to eat that many to get the gallbladder. And when your stools finally go red, your liver's been flushed, your gallbladder's been flushed, and, and all of these secretions are starting to work better, and it pulls people out of bilious attacks. Now, if you don't have a gallbladder, you have to start taking ox bile salts after meals, because that is the bile you need to emulsify your oils, so you can absorb them. I know there were three questions. What about regular beans? Beets. Beets. Right, that's fine, too. People say, how do you cook them? I say, worry about anything you do, get them in your mouth. <laughs> and so ox bile, how do you Don't microwave them. How do you spell ox bile? Ox, O X B I L E. Okay. Mm -hmm. Standard process makes something called cola call. It works fantastic. What is it called? Cola call, C H O L A C O L. There's a cola call one and a cola call two. Cola call one is for acute, cola call two is for chronic. So it's okay to eat the whole beet, or do we need to? Well, the beet tops are absolutely full yeah. of stuff. Just fantastic stuff. When women are having a problem with breastfeeding, um, 
and they're not making enough milk or it's not nutritious enough, you, you immediately put them on vitamin D, emulsified, you put them on selenium, and to give the baby iron, you have mother drink, drink bee juice. And how long does it take to get that into the mouth? 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I know beet greens had oxalic acid in it, which blocks the absorption of iron. Is that? Beets. I didn't say beet greens for, uh, for uh, beets. I you said beet tops. You can eat beet tops, they're really good. But I don't have women eat beet tops, I have eat beets to get the iron. And there's a lot of lithium in that too. Mm -hmm. Yes? A raw beet versus cooked beets? Any kind of beets. For cleansing? Any kind of beets. Okay, so cooked beets are good also not just raw. Taking this any way you can get it down is better than not taking it. Now, in an ideal world, yeah, I cannot juice. I can't juice a beet because there's something in the skin that makes my throat go raw. So I have to peel it. I'm losing half my nutritional value, but I can't. I can't walk around and not talk for four hours because there's something in that. I like to talk a lot. I do. <laughs> Sometimes I stick my foot in my mouth just to shut it up. <laughs> or I do this. <laughs> there was a question. So I guess this would apply to all of them. If you need particular minerals, right. magnesium, etc., so that you can custom craft how you do your gardening. Yep. Right. So I should probably speed this up, and I'll go to the minerals as it relates to this. So we got the heart that needs boron. The body has circadian rhythms, and the master gene is called the clock gene. Imagine that. Um, so acupuncture laid out these circadian cycles in two-hour blocks. This is what's been in recorded acupuncture books forever. I took a look at this, and I broke it down to every hour. So at 2 in the morning, the liver is in full regeneration. At 4 in the morning, the lung is in full regeneration. But at some point, you've got to go from the liver to the lungs, and that's at 3 o'clock, and I can name the mineral that allows for that transfer. This is what man knows currently, kind of summed up about general things about the human body. Well, this happens, and this happens, and this happens, and this happens. Wait, could you go back to that? Sorry. <laughs> sure. These all gonna be this, this will be in the book. You can donate $25 to it. Oh, oh, okay. thing. <laughs> so this is the traditional what goes on. Liver, lung, large intestine, stomach. It's a never-ending cycle. And you can use for what's... For every reaction, there's an equal opposite reaction. You can say, well, the gallbladder generates from 11 to 1, from 11 to 1 in the afternoon, it's the heart. Or what's the opposite the large intestine? It's the kidney. Or what's opposite the small intestine? It's the liver. This is out of the book, Minerals for the Genetic Code. I tried to make it look like a periodic table. This is all your amino acids, the chemical composition, the minerals that associate with these uh, various amino acids and the three-letter codon that comes off the standard genetic chart. And since everything has color, I'll briefly go through the 24 or the 21 amino acids. Very colorful. Arginine is a powerful, powerful amino acid. They're all powerful. This is the one that's generated by the by the need for controlling oxidation through selenium. You don't make this one unless you have selenium in your body. Well, this is the one that's got us all in trouble. Mm -hmm. What's that word? No. Glyphosate. Glyphosate. Oh, what Glyphosate. 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 Gl
Isoleucine, this is a, a muscle protein, another muscle protein. This is the antiviral uh, lysine. People get cold sores or take lysine. This is methionine, as in selenomethionine. Phenylalanine, proline, this is the one that affiliates with silica or sand. Serine, this is the one that affiliates with bromine and boron. The ornine is the amino acid that affiliates with fluoride and potassium, and this is the, this is the part of the protection that you always need to have the ornine to keep the fluoride under control. And magnesium theornine is a brain-specific magnesium. Tryptophan, that's the stuff that makes you sleep. It takes magnesium to make tryptophan work. Tyrosine is all thyroid and stomach. Valine is muscle. And Instead of making 200 slides, I said, we'll just go right to the book. The second paragraph was what basically I don't like. It's in 1996, when autism was 1 in 10,000 and celiac disease is 1 in 10,000, we now have autism 1 in 58, boys 1 in 86 girls, and celiac disease is 1 in 110. What happened in 1996 that made these numbers plummet. Well, that's when glycate was introduced into the food chain. Oops. Glycine. So the history, you can go online and see the history. That's pretty much stuff. That with the chart that I showed you on the front of the book, this is all the yin yang. It took me hours to make that chart. <laughs> hours. Awesome. This particular chart is to give you an idea of what color associates with minerals that have electron valences. So both right and left is zeros, and there's no electrical charge. It's either going to be black or white, but you're, you're minus ones. There's only four of them, iodine, bromine, chloride, and fluoride. That's all. But yet iodine is the heaviest, most dense metal you've got to have sitting in every cell, including your thyroid, to run the whole hormone show. Plus twos, oxygen, sulfur, selenium, and telluria. The fifth one's a nasty one. It's called plenonium. Has anybody heard of plenonium 210? The Russians use it to take out people in faraway countries. They just slip a little bit of plenonium into them, and they're dead in three weeks. Or all you got to do is light up a cigarette. Because what is in a cigarette that triggers the massive amount of lung cancers is plenonium 210, which lodges into the bifurcations <coughs> of your lungs, and it sits there with an alpha emitter of a half-life of 45 days, breaking down all your chromosomes. The minus threes, nitrogen, phosphorus, that bad antimony and arsenic. And you have to do great measures to keep the antimony and arsenic out of your system. Plus four, minus four. Carbon, backbone of the DNA code, silica, sand, makes everything strong and flexible. Those are the two primary ones. The plus three is the ratio of aluminum to boron. Plus two is the calcium magnesium, and plus one is your sodium potassium. Oh, I'm going, I'm going down. Hit the wrong button again. This is the periodic chart that I utilize. I'm having a hard time getting up. Everything just above boron are all the name of the subatomic particles that your body will hyperaccumulate through DNA and minerals that we call acupuncture meridians. And there are many devices out there that you can measure these pressure points because all along these ley lines, there's changes in the skin. If they can measure, they get tacky, they get touchy. Uh, people that don't know anything about you can walk up and grab your wrist and do a reading on your pressure points. You can't even get out of good acupuncture school unless you just they stick an arm out there and you have to tell them what's wrong. There's nothing else to it. I go to chiropractors and they go, what's wrong? And I go, if i got to tell you, you don't know enough to treat me. It's that simple. And I don't like to be treated unless I think the person has actually got a working brain. Minerals all have electrical charges. 
They take all these minerals in 100% purity, they put them into an MRI machine, they make the magnet at 100 megahertz, which is equated to other things of hydrogen, and when these minerals start dancing around the thing, they know to a millionth of a megahertz what's going on. And all minerals have a shape. So when your DNA calls for proteins to be made, it knows exactly what minerals need to be present in what amounts to give our proteins three-dimensional shape. Throw in the bad minerals, you start making proteins that are the wrong size and the wrong shape. And it goofs up the flow of magnetic energy. Okay, so I came here going, oh, well, this is going to be easy. We're just going to make a machine, and we're going to aim it at something, and we're going to get really wonderful knowledge, and it's going to be called a gizmo. <laughs> I had to get, I had to sit back, shut up, be quiet, not say a word, and realize that I was looking at this in my brain for too long to understand the technicalities of what they're up against. You bounce light off of something, some of it's going to absorb, and some of it's going to bounce back. And I thought it was as easy as just, well, you know the frequency, but... Aim it. Point and shoot. And well, let's see. Calcium is not standing all by itself in a watermelon rind. It happens to be tied up with a lot of other things that also has colors too. And we can't discriminate between the calcium and all the stuff that's wrapped around it. So now we have to look at more broader things to try to measure. And that's their dilemma right now, is to figure out how can you make something and collect all this mega data and then come back a year later and say, well, you know, here's where the trends are, and the more mega data we get, the better we can tell you what our machine is doing. And I can't wait to see the product five years from now. I can't wait to see it tomorrow. But this is what this principle is based on, is bouncing something off and getting the reflection. Here's the ley lines, how many actually acupuncture points, acupressure points, whatever you want to call it, are associated with each ley line. So as I go through this, the key is uh, the upper left would be what number of the mineral we're talking about, the corresponding yin yang symbol, the name of the mineral or subatomic particle, uh, what, what Yi Xing reflex it is, which is more of a psychological profile that that mineral has. And every mineral has a great psychological profile. I, I like oxygen, it's, 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 its profile is great, and when you go to aluminum, it's adversity. Um, you, I mean, every one of these has these profiles. And we're not just one mineral, we're a combination of all this stuff. And, and when you have people that are horribly out of magnesium balance, they're going to be in a constant state of contradiction. And if there was a movie ever made about magnesium, it's called Jekyll and Hyde. <laughs> and the people that live with chronically depressed magnesium people know that because they can be normal. They can blow up and go nutso and be normal before you got over the fact that what they just did. And to them, and to them it's normal. Well, I'm over it. Aren't you? No, I don't think I want to see that again. Go take some magnesium and go to bed, please. So the very lightest subatomic particle is a quark. And uh, we have the quark. Let's see if I can make this view this page width. Okay. So the, the lightest known subatomic particle is a single quark. It affiliates with glycine. And, and that is a problem because the number one vertebrae is what the skull sits on. In the great brain, puts a fluid out every eight hours, completely regenerates the cerebral spinal fluid, and it goes out every nerve. And every organ, every tissue in the body is touching the brain. Well, the brain can't read itself. So it has a loop that goes back to the brain. And that loop would have a profound effect by or from glycine, or whatever glycine is attached to. And my knowledge of glycine in this nasty chemical associated with glycine is that wherever glycine goes, the rest of that molecule shows up. What's well, a phosphorus molecule? And maybe we don't need energy from glycine associated with phosphorus there. And that's the problem, is this stuff sticks so tight together, DNA calls for glycine, and all of a sudden a glycosate molecule sits there instead of just instead of just a phosphorus molecule. And there's the small large intestine. The second um, 
the second lightest quark is affiliated with the ability to move energy from the intestines to the stomach. Um, and the Ishi would see be a natural response. Now on the right hand side, the bottom two is, there's two types of opposite reactions. One is a time of day that's an opposite reaction. And the other reaction is, there's actually nine levels of minerals, but we only use eight. But you've got to account for all nine because they are a reality. So I have this, for every reaction there's an equal opposite reaction of what we need in the body, and then I have the equal opposite reaction taking into account the ninth level of minerals. So I had to put both of those numbers up there to show you that, well, what you're doing at 3 o'clock, what you're doing at 7 a.m. could have a profound effect at 7 p.m. when magnesium is regenerated. And that's, that, but that's what that extra part is for. So at some point, you go from the large intestine to the stomach. In an acupuncture, they know exactly what point that is. It's called an LAO or LAU, LAU point. And then somewhere along the course of that, that spot's right there. And that's the spot where the energy starts to shift from one energy field to the other. Meaning one organ to another. Yeah, you go from one organ to another. So tyrosine, the amino acid, falls on the stomach meridian. Um, and you'll see that that's negative one. Well, what's the, ne the, the most important negative one is iodine. So the most important iodine molecule deals with tyrosine. So tyrosine is all fiber. There may be other spots that tyrosine is used, but it's primarily used in your thyroid. So I'm going to skip down to the mineral minerals, because we could go through all the subatomic minerals. And I'll show you what I've done different down to the, the real the mineral minerals. Are here. <laughs> okay. So what I put into all of the minerals is the, the word hydrogen. Then I put the absorption spectrum. I put all my information. And then I do quite a bit of talk about hydrogen. We'll talk about this one briefly. Tritium. Tritium. The world's largest concentration of tritium is in Japan. It's at a nuclear facility called Fukushima Perfecto. And when their bleeder reactor had a little bit of a burp, <laughs> they had to start building containers. And they built big containers, and they built lots of them, and they built them as fast as they could. Now they're rotting. They don't even have any more room to build them. Well, they went, well, Really, this is just a low-level radiation. We're going to just dump it in the ocean. They've been saying that for a year. They haven't done it yet. Well, maybe they are. We don't know. But their intentions are to not build any more and just take what they got and dump it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to have a big, it's going to have a big effect on what? Siri. See where it says Siri in there? Well, Siri also is associated with boron and bromine. And then the flow of energy is going to goof up wherever Syrian is. In our life? No. In the ocean? Yes. Something called deuterium. This is actually a mineral all by itself. It has its own properties. I could give you a glass of deuterium and you would drink it and think it's water. There's two drops of deuterium per quart in the ocean. There. In Europe, they actually sell deuterium-free water. You want to get control of your deuterium, find Chaga, C-H-A-G-A. It's one of the most prized medicinal components in Chinese medicine. They don't have any, they, they, they'll tell you right up front, you look at it, we don't know what it is, we don't know what it is, really good for you. But I can tell you what it's doing, it keeps the ratio between deuterium and selenium at the right levels. And if you have too much deuterium in there, you're going to have a release and you're going to say, there's something that needs to get out of me, it's going to get out of me right now because I'm going to pee my pants, it burns. The only animal they know that can actually detect it are rats. You give deuterium water to rats, they won't drink it. <coughs> so what would deuterium and what other? Two drops per quart of ocean water. No, deuterium balances. Selenium. Selenium. So look at the time of day, see what it says, Large intestine to stomach, 7 a.m. That's the same time that selenium regenerates. They're on the same frequency, just different octaves. Yes? 
um, the chaga. Just, I've seen where they like just make a tea. Some people say it's ground. What do you say? Chaga about comes off of a birch tree. And no, it's, it's rock hard. Yeah. That's so why I've got a coffee grinder. It, it's supposed to be, yeah, ground up. Yeah. Does it matter if it's ground or is it? I grind it up. I go out to my drill press and I got a big brand new drill that's never had oil and I just turn it on and I shave it. <laughs> yeah, it gets hard after a while. But you can use chowder 20, 30, 40 times. I don't have enough time, but I had a personal experience where I probably lost five or six pounds of deuterium. I did deuterium and we were coming back from my cottage. My buddy was driving and I was writing this book and I mean every hour on the hour. We clocked it. I got out, and my void was excessive. And I'm like, am I becoming type 1 diabetic? But I didn't feel bad. All I know is by the end of the trip, when I had to go, he had to pull over right now, and I might have three drops come out. But it got rid of that burning sensation. And I didn't know what it was. And I told my wife, I said, no, I'm going to dream about this tonight. I woke him up in the morning, and he said, well, did you dream about it or get on the internet? And I said, both. He says, I got rid of deuterium. But yeah, everybody in Japan, this is their number one on their worst list to get the deuterium out of it. And this is from drinking chocolate. Not deuterium, the tritium. How did you get it? What's that? How did you get deuterium? Put it up. How do we get it? It's in water. Every water. I know it's two drops per ocean. I don't know what the rest of the water is. You can't find a lot of information on deuterium. There's a guy, there's a group over in Europe, there's lots of papers on it. And they're, they're doing cancer treatments of deuterium-free water. You want to make it? It's easy. Take a glass jar, put it in the sun for a day, put it in the freezer. When it starts to freeze, knock a hole in the top, dump it out. And do the same thing again. Because it has different properties than oxygen. D2 is different than H2O. It freezes first. So when you go to freeze stuff twice and dump the water out, what's left over is water without deuterium. You can just go on the internet how to make deuterium-free water. It's as simple as that. Helium is responsible for sunlight. It's the thermal nuclear reaction from helium to hydrogen that makes that big ball in the sky. Yes? Sorry, just to back up. So when you have excess deuterium and you take a lot of chocolate, that's when you feel the burning. And you yeah, when you're getting rid of it, it irritates and burns. Okay, it's getting that selenium balance. Wait. Getting the balance between deuterium and selenium. So, yeah, let's, let, let's selenium. It's kind of like fluoride and iodine. You keep, you got to have very little fluoride and a lot of iodine to keep the balance right. So if you get too much fluoride, you got to really saturate yourself with iodine and push it back out. So when you're, if you're taking, if you're drinking chaga and you get this burning, you know, you you're, yeah, you're dumping, you're dumping deuterium. You know you have excess deuterium. Yep. And what are the side effects of having excess deuterium? Good question. Uh, possible. Well, if your DNA code is calling for oxygen to be present and the deuterium is too high and the influence of deuterium changes the size and the shape of the molecule that you're making, you may not make what you want to have be the, a functioning protein. And then the body just goes, well, whatever you made is not right, puts it in the toilet, breaks it down, and makes another one. There's a lot of, there's a lot of diseases that are based on that. Sorry, I'm too cold, but I'm getting the book. Oh, my jacket? I'm getting the book. Okay. <laughs> I got my jacket. Okay. <laughs> Can I ask you a question about um, iodine? Yes. Um, what do you think of uh, E3 Live as a good source of, of what? E3 Live? It's yeah, from Klamath Lake. Lake is some frozen algae. I don't know anything about it. Okay. Do you have what do you recommend for like the best sources of iodine? I'm assuming kelp. Well, or there's there's hundreds of species of kelp. And they are accumulator of what's in the ocean, and a lot of them accumulate a lot of cadmium. There's a lot of toxicity. If you said, I'm going to take kelp from the Chesapeake Bay, that'd be the stupidest thing you could do because there's so many minerals in there that kelp's going to have it. The kelp that I would like to see people take either comes from Maine, which is the American Kelp Company, or Thorvin Kelp. That's harvested on the north side of Iceland. That's what's in my product, the Grand Thorvin Kelp. Yeah. Okay. Thorvin Kelp. And it's certified organic. Yes. There's also the seaweed van in Maine. You know, it's way the heck up there in Maine. Up in Lab yeah, towards Labrador. Yes. Yeah, that's the Labrador Kelp Company. But their beds he's, went he's their beds company. went screwy. He has his own company. Oh, does he? The seaweed van has his own yeah, his own. What's the name of it? Mason. The seaweed. Yes. Mason. Okay. 
You know, here, here's where these, these carp farmers, help, help harvesters, are having a problem. I live on a lake, and there's something called riparian rights. Meaning that, well, if I sit there on the lake and I put my dock out there, and you can drive your boat on the water, but I own the land underneath it, right out to the middle of the lake. And it goes to court. Yeah, you sure do. Now there's people living on the ocean going, wait, that's my kilt trees, you're harvesting it, I want my cut. And they're in court battling over. That's not, that's not your kelp to just go out and take because it's in the ocean. I've got riparian rights. I own 300 foot of the Atlantic Ocean frontage, and it goes all the way to Europe. No. <laughs> and they're, of course, battling over it. Well, what about the people in Europe that have that same 300 going to the U.S.? They don't have good enough lawyers. How does the compare to kelp? What's that? Dull. Red it's, red it's, red. It's, isn't dulse a form of kelp? It's just no, a kelp. No, it's kelp is the, it's not. I don't know enough yeah, about kelp. It's, I don't, it's, it's, it's not good. good. There's two kinds of iodine. There's iodine and iodide. You've got to have a 60-40 ratio to really, really be pure about it. Standard process makes a product called idomir that has that ratio and pretty good. What's it called? Idomir, I-D-O-M-E-R-E. So lithium is deficient in, oh, one in four, one in five hair tests. Parkinson's researchers that do hair analysis is one in two. Without lithium, people get very depressed. Um, and the eye of shame, I love it. When you don't have enough, you get into a state of danger. And the histidine molecule associates with it. And I'm going to jump down to, I'm oh, sorry. Is there a food source that's good with, with lithium? Yeah, yeah. beets. Yeah. Beets. Part of the <laughs> <laughs> no, the red stuff. I, I particularly like to talk about nitrogen because if you want to understand about nitrogen, you have to take a look at what does it take to absorb a mineral? Well, you know, maybe sodium and a couple minerals will get across the gut walls, but they're supposed to be carried across the gut walls. Oh, but I do a diva. What do you think of amoeba? Well, they got that stuff so small, it just crosses no matter what. I said, I don't know if I want to get something that small. Show me in nature where something is that small that we all want to use. We want our bacteria to incorporate it into proteins so we can absorb it. How do you really absorb minerals? It's with vitamins. What are vitamins made out of? Nitrogen. So nitrogen the very first organ that is formed after conception is the heart. Well, when the heart starts beating, it needs energy. So the second organ formed in the human body is the small intestine to provide energy to the heart. So the energy moves from the heart to the small intestine with nitrogen. Come on, Richard. And you take a look at this page here, and you will see that I put all the B vitamins under the category of nitrogen. Because when you look at the chemical structure of all the B vitamins, all it is is different forms of nitrogen. So if you don't have the gut bacteria making all of those, then you're not going to absorb all the minerals. There's B2. Those big nitrogen rings up there. Vitamin B3, there's a big nitrogen ring. Let's go down to B12 because that's where there's a little bit of a, a change in it. Oh, that's not very big at all, is it? <clears throat> the center of this big complex molecule with all this nitrogen is cobalt. And cobalt is that link between all of our trace minerals and getting them into your system. No cobalt. No stomach acid. No stomach acid, no cobalt. No cobalt, no absorption of chromium, zinc, iron, nickel, germanium, gallium, <coughs> lignum. Seems like a top. Iron. So if you don't have that nitrogen arrangement, you're in big doo-doo because all of the workhorses can't get in. There's ortic acid. That particular configuration has an affinity to 
lithium. So when boric acid, which is a vitamin B, but was kind of deregulated because well, everybody's got it, maybe not now. Because if you don't have oric acid, you're not going to absorb lithium. I'm finding one in four, one in five that don't have it. Parkinson's only has one in two have it. Maybe this particular vitamin is not being made by the gut bacteria, so you're not absorbing lithium, and it's called lithium orotate. So do you need much lithium not to be postal? No. Five milligrams a day. Maybe five in the morning, five at night. If you're really low for a while, they bring it up. It works. It works really well. I, I got before and after hair test. It's test after test. In three months, I can take someone who is looking at that glass as though it's always half empty and it's always going to be empty versus half full and getting full. Because I talk to the spouse. Because really good spouses go, if I say, tell me, is that glass half empty or half full on your wife? The answer is, well, she's on the other line or in the room. You ain't going to say nothing. I got the message. Well, it means, of course, you know what you're talking about. And I call back three months later and I says, hey, that lithium level looks good. Tell me, how's your wife? Thank you very much. End of the conversation. They don't want to dwell on it, but they really like the person that they were in love with with lithium more than tolerated the person that they have without lithium. So is that the supplement or the gas? Nope. The supplement is lithium or a tank. Medical doctors use 500 to 1,000 milligrams a day, which goofs up the liver, constantly getting liver tests, and you can use 5 milligrams morning and night, and all it does is get the lithium levels up and gives you thyroid support versus ruining everything in the path to try to keep you from going postal. I have a question. Yes. So since the, that compound is made by the... Gut bacteria? Yeah, the gut bacteria. Long term, do these people, are they able to make their own or... If you get the gut straightened out, you change the diet. That's the problem. Got to have nitric oxide. The big pill on TV. Is Viagra. What's Viagra doing? Well, if you have a nitric oxide deficiency, then certain parts of you don't work. And so instead of heeding the warning signs that your heart may not be making enough nitric oxide, they just shuttle the nitric oxide so that you, you can then achieve the desired goals and maybe have a heart attack. Nitric oxide is made on the ductless gland on the heart. It requires arginine, it requires nitrogen, that's why it's called nitric oxide. You know, too much of anything, too little of anything, this has got to be in balance. And it's just a, another form of nitrogen, that's why I put in there. Under the, and then when you have low nitric oxides, here is, you know, stomach acid, oxidative stress, all kinds of things happen to you. And it's really good. Now, if you want to get lots of good nitrogen, beets, B vitamins, B vitamins, that's it, B vitamins. <laughs> The champions. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Be by uh, exercise. Exercise. I don't think that going to to big box store and buying coal derivatives of, of coal tar stuff because it's bioidentical in vitamins is worth it. You need vitamins that are actually derived from food or food concentrations to make it work. Um, you get into the vitamins and you find out how critical this stuff is for brain function and the ability to absorb minerals. You just have no idea how you ever live without doing a lot of B vitamins. So we're out of that. We're into oxygen. Oxygen is um, gives the body great power. Notice that oxygen affiliates with glycine. That's not always a good deal, considering the current state of crop applications to our food. So I had to put down basically where there's a whole lot of oxygen, uh, especially in the crust, the ocean, and uh, the crust is 45 percent. You can see right there on uh, the oceans, it's 85 percent. The atmosphere, I mean, it just is full of it. And you notice that all the noble gases are found in the atmosphere that we breathe. And in this book, I put down the noble gases as part of being needed for our, our genetic code. You can't push a noble gas, you can't pull a noble gas, it's neutral. It takes your thought process and embeds it into DNA, giving you the emotional epigenetics of your genetic code. So we talk about water. 
because it's so much of oxygen. It's unbelievable that people don't realize what they're drinking. The city of Alpena, 22 miles away. They take water out of Lake Heron and ruin it. They fluoridate it, chlorinate it, the aluminum sulfate. I'm like, really? Why do you have to have aluminum in the drinking water? Doesn't Lake Huron have enough? No, it doesn't have any. So I won't go to the town and, and, and buy food. Well, if I do, I go to places that don't use water when they prepare it. That, that aluminum is found in your brain in three minutes. This lady took a bunch of lab rats she didn't like very well to Detroit and give them the drinking water dipped them in liquid nitrogen, and in three minutes found aluminum in the brain of the rats. Well, that's not good, because aluminum likes to attach to anything that's phosphorus, and it binds it up, and it makes phosphorus <coughs> a very non-workable tool. And since every nerve in your brain is coated with phosphorus, and every cell in your body is coated with phosphorus, you don't necessarily want aluminum in there gumming it up. Chris Exleter from Keeley University released a paper yesterday. I showed it yesterday morning because it came in my email box yesterday morning that says his research says autistic children have sky high aluminum levels. Not a good thing. That was, I've not ever seen autistic being directly linked to aluminum. He's directly linked aluminum to familiar Alzheimer's. So the Alpena paper put a big headline. Water and sewer rates to go up. They do print my letters to the editor. And it goes like this. Why raise the water and sewer rates? Just quit putting aluminum in the drinking water. Aluminum is related to Alzheimer's in the following journal. You only get 150 words. You've got to get your point really quick. And I signed it. People started coming in going, did you know they put aluminum in the drinking water? And I go, yeah, where'd you learn that? I read it in the Alpena paper. And says, who wrote it? I said, I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> Now, one person that came in and talked about it knew he wrote it. So, that's creating a buzz. <laughs> and there's another one because Air Force bases, sometimes there are airplanes that don't always have landing gear set function, and they put a lot of money into those airplanes, a lot of money into those pilots. So they put stuff on a 3,000 foot runway, so they'll skid for 3,000 feet. Something left of the airplane, the guy walks away. They've been doing this forever. You got the Wordsmith Air Force Base, you got the Alpena Air Force Base, you got the Oscoda Air Force Base. When you're in my airplane, you can see all three. And everything in a five mile radius now has fluoride groundwater contamination. Because when they spread this anti skid device that doesn't let sparks get created, it turns out it's a fluoride molecule, and all they do is just go wash it off. Just put a lot of water up there, get it off the runway. Well, now it's in everybody's wells. So the headline of the Alpena paper was yesterday. Fluoride not found in the city tap water. I'm like, are you kidding? On your website, you put it in there. <laughs> I had to laugh at that one. Ascorbic acid is powdered oxygen. That's why I put vitamin C under oxygen. Water soluble, meaning you can pee it all out as fast as you take it. However, if you have boron is good, and your magnesium is good, and you're retaining selenium, your body will recycle vitamin C over and over and over. It'll oxidize it, it'll unoxidize it. But if you're low on selenium, in the toilet it goes. And that goes back to having boron, which makes you retain magnesium. Magnesium is a plus two that regenerates a seven at night. The opposite of plus two is minus two. Selenium regenerates a seven in the morning. So if you don't have boron, you may not have selenium, and then you can't recycle your vitamin C. So I had to put underneath oxygen vitamin C. The other one that's really good is hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. How many people have a hot tub? Maybe. What do you put in your hot tub, Bill? Nothing. Nothing? What do you put in your hot tub? Hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide. Bingo. You know, people come in, I don't know, I'm just so sick, Rich. Well, you got a hot tub here. What do you put it? I don't know. My husband takes care of it. What is it chloride? No, my eyes don't burn. Oh, it's bromine. You like doing bromine dips? Really? How long do you stay in that bromine? <laughs> oh, you mean your gallbladder doesn't work? You can't make hydrochloric acid? You get fat, lazy, and stupid? Bromine, yeah. 
If it's not chloride, it's bromide. It's like, really, you do dip your body in bromide for 30 minutes a day. Well, all that does is run the iodine out of your body, and it loads up your brain with bromine. And when you do put some iodine in there, the bromine runs out of the brain. You get sick until it puts it back into the brain. you got to slowly run the bromide out of your body. You do that with chloride, as in sodium chloride. So hydrogen peroxide is a really good tool. Uh, the dairy farm I go to, it gets in about everything. They buy it by the 50 gallon drums, and I buy it from them for a gallon at a time. Uh, there's a lot of people that take it. I personally don't. Uh, and a lot of people have been taking it for a lot of years because they think it helps out get a lot of lower life ones and them under control. Your brain makes so much hydrogen peroxide, it's not funny, but what do you do? As soon as you have water, H2O, turn into H2O2, well, it instantly sheds that oxygen. Now you've got a free radical oxygen that's going to what? Oxidize something. What is there to rescue that? 24 different selenium proteins in your brain. So when you're up on the stage thinking like crazy and you're making H2O2 and now it's making oxygen, the selenium is there to mock it. Without selenium, you don't have control of the oxidation system. I don't care if it's a carotenoid, what vitamin it is, all oxidation comes back down to selenium's ability to control. Low selenium, high oxidation rates. Fluoride, you got to watch out for. You got to stay away from fluorides. I'm going to skip down to the amino acids. Well, I guess I'm not. Ten o'clock is here. I'll take yeah. I'll take questions for four minutes. Didn't even get to the amino acids. I'm sorry. Start yeah. here. Yes. Well, um, Rod. So much detail, it's all scattered. By the so scattered diagram. So, net net, what's the cost of buying supplements, or that would be, uh, in your recommendation, as a, a, a broad uh, wants to know what's up. panacea to you want something that these works? health yeah. detriments from our diet? You're going to give me magnesium pills, there's a dollar a day. You're going to give me selenium, there's another dollar a day. You're going to give me I'm going to give you iodine, selenium, boron, magnesium, and vitamin D. I put it in a bottle and I charge 25 cents a day. It's called the Grand Unified Mineral Complex. Yes. Okay. Um, re regarding uh, hydrogen peroxide, so you're suggesting that people do not take the green hydrogen peroxide? That's up to you. I don't, I don't personally take it. When, when I first learned about this, I had this master chart, and this guy was telling me, he says, well, I take hydrogen peroxide. I'm going, I'm not sure that's the greatest idea. Well, I'm going to take it no matter what you said. I said, just do me a favor, take a lot of selenium so that it's protected. It, boron has one gene, and that's to put the boron into your brain so it leaks out every nerve and goes through the whole body. Thyroid, iodine has three genes. Selenium has 22. Zinc has 4,000. Calcium has 3,000. But these really critical minerals, they don't bounce all over the place. They're put into very specific positions so your DNA code can work right. So if you're going to take hydrogen peroxide, just take all the study. Yes? <clears throat> so since you didn't discuss amino acids, I know two sources of food that are complete. Uh, quinoa okay. and buckwheat. Buckwheat? Yeah. Uh, are there others? And key in what? Quinoa. I don't even know quinoa. I per, per, from Peru. It's a very small grain. It's a very oh, fashionable okay. very good. and health food yeah. source. But are there any other sources? They, they, it well, everything like, that's alive is made of a protein. Can you assimilate it? Do you have enough? All these proteins need to be broken down by your digestive tract. By what? Hydrochloric acid. It has to break all these bonds into real simple things. A1 milk has morphine that your body instantly snaps and the morphine goes into your system. A2 milk, that morphine is there, but it's so boundly tight, I don't care what you're doing to it, you're not going to break it free. This happens with other foods, too. I can eat lentils and get 3% protein absorption. I can eat eggs and get 11% absorption. But I eat lentils and legs together, I get 86% absorption. It's food combining. It's, it, 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 there's a lot to be said for combining it. But you've got to get these proteins in. If you don't have stomach acid, you're not going to get what you need. If you don't have gallbladder fluid, you're not going to get what you need. If your pancreas is all bothered, it's not going to be part of this digestive process that allows you to absorb Stuff that makes vitamins to absorb minerals and get the protein spread through the body. Yes. Chris, earlier in your talk, you showed us that block of 
proposing, like setting yeah. the board when things in January. Yeah. Should we be concerned with the timing of when we're consuming foods? No, nope, because then you'll forget the tape. Just get them in your body, let your body know what you're doing. I mean, you can be walk around the stop clock. Oh, it's time to do this. It's time to do that. Time to do that. You said that one of the elements will last eight hours in your body. Hold on. Yeah. So yeah. So you got to keep taking it. Well, that's why you're supposed to eat fruit because fruit's high in work. Okay. There's a half hour break, and then we go out again. I'm not going anywhere, so I can't answer the question. Where's my book? No, no. These are all e-books. And they were supposed to be ready for conference, but one thing led to another, and I think that it didn't work out. Do you have a website you're working for? Just Dr. Dr. Ritual Reduction. Okay. I have a question about flowing water. Oh, there's no question about that. I know. How do you get the system? Anything that's in the water? I know. Hey, how you doing? Hello. You do nothing for me. We need it. It's in the ocean, right? How do we get out of the ocean after that? Yeah, in the ocean. Yeah. So, why do you need to do Yeah, but how do they stay to the ocean? Oh, the H2O because the water that's in there? Yeah. That's what it is. But there's no way for us to get out of there. So, people live next to the ocean are better off than we are. Are they really? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. So we'll be a by the the See the thing was if I have so many dollars to make this much is still here. And you don't have an eight thousand dollars. So we'll list the first edition of next year. You can download it if you want to put it in the You don't want to put it in the middle of the You don't want to put it in the middle of the You don't want to put it in the middle of the with the research. Yes, much more fun sharing. Because it says that of course it's in the number one, uh, sodium is number two, it just lists everything wrong. I Some things there are no research. There's only yeah. for cancer, so it's just a matter of time. To it can burn. But this is a brand yeah. new, you've got to come in here. Yeah. I don't know how long you're going to want to use that filter. Squeeze this, and put some fire in there. If I go in there, it goes to that, and I get 90% of the fluoride out to make my coffee this morning. I'm going to get 90% of the fluoride that I wouldn't have. Well, you're not going to have to use it. 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 Are you familiar with the I think it's called. I put it on the All right, I'll see you in a bit. I'll see you in a bit. How are you? Good.